Hey guys, it's Psycho Hark here and welcome to the season three opening. Um, we are with Sporting Gijon and we're starting this season up and uh, it's going to be fun. We're looking for a Champions League spot and here we get our uh, all the mails you get in the beginning. Uh, there's a transfer budget, 50 million and 70,000 wage budget. So that's all looking pretty nice. And um, one thing, we finished seventh last season, but somehow, I don't know why, the game glitched and it gave us a Euro League spot. Now, if that is because we, um, I don't know, because we were seventh and that's not supposed to be a Europa League spot. But maybe somehow, um, the winner of the cup went straight to the uh, went straight to the Champions League, and then they're not part of the Euro League or something like that. So I don't know. But we're in the Euro League, which is crazy. So basically, Europa Cup. And here I have my shortlisted players, and you guys, um, I'm just these are some free agents that I looked. There was a keeper basically because we had no keeper on the bench. We were really lucky that Butland didn't get injured last season because we didn't have a keeper on the bench. So I was just looking at kind of a free agent. Now this guy Kersakov is Russian. He's only 18. And I thought it would be a good signing to bring in kind of a left winger. Um, he's 6'8 overall. He's quite pacey. So, um, you know, he's going to be kind of a squad rotational player that we can use every now and again. Because, to be fair, we don't have too many wingers uh, at the moment. Uh, you know, Benzi has a striker, obviously, who plays on the wing. Then we have Trejo, and that's pretty much about it with Nahar. And um, so there's another striker that looks to bring in Buzian. Uh, he's French, also quite pacey. And uh, then there was this guy, I think he has five-star skills, which is crazy for a central midfielder that can uh, kind of cover up uh, when uh, Malangu is um, Malangu or Casemiro are injured or just need to rest them. Then we can play uh, Ricky, and then we all obviously have um, uh, Mandi there as well. But then look at this. This is going to be our main uh, kind of uh, person that we're going to be approaching this transfer window, Iker Muniain. Uh, I had him at my time in Manchester United back in that career mode if he were there when I did that. And uh, we were going for him again because we had the money, to sp we had the sp uh, cash to splash. And I offered him 10 million and um, the Squavas and we have to see if they accept that. I get some transfer offers for Lukaku and I'm just like, nah, fuck you, 45 million. And uh, do the same there with uh, just kind of counter offering uh, different uh, teams here. And uh, we get this back and we say 4,000 uh, because, you know, they didn't accept it. And this is actually fast forwarded. So um, you can kind of see the transfer action going on in the background. We got our keeper, uh, you know, because uh, by the way, the transfer action for these um, free agents isn't that important. But we got the keeper, which is good, which means that we now have a backup keeper in case Butlin gets injured or something. However, um, Athletic Bilbao told us that the transfer offer for Muniain was unacceptable. So we have to offer more. We offered 12.5 with uh, De Las Cuevas, which is quite a hefty sum already uh, for Iker Muniain. And, um, you know, we'll have to see if they go ahead and accept that. Here we're trying to sign uh, Frank Buzian, the striker, 19 years old, again, with pretty decent potential, I guess. And uh, we also managed to get Kerakov into the team. Just going to show you where he kind of fits in. We're going to put him on the bench there um, because, obviously, uh, well, you know, because we didn't have any kind of attacking players on the bench. Also, uh, they accept the offer for uh, Luca Ricci. So this is, I think, Ricci or Ricci. Maybe Ricci because he's Italian. Uh, I think it's actually Ricci. I'm not sure. If you're Italian, leave a comment or if you know how it's pronounced. I'm usually pretty good at pronouncing names, but this one I'm not too sure. But he's 18 five-star skills. Going to play right there in the middle. Going to be a very good signing for us. And um, again, Munia, they said with Munia that no, you know, we can't accept that. So I decide, I'm kind of looking through my players, and I decided to offer no player and just straight up cash 14.5 million and see if they accept that because apparently they weren't interested in the player. Now, Frank Buzian finally accepts, and uh, he's going to bring, uh, you know, again, some depth into our squad because last season I felt that while we had a very strong, you know, first 11 and even half of the bench. Um, we weren't, you know, strong enough to to uh, have, you know, that kind of depth in our squad to play in the cup and playing, and especially now considering that we're in the Euro League, we definitely have to get more uh, depth in our squad uh, so we can rotate players uh, and and go far in the Euro League and reach that Champions League spot because that's absolutely vital. Now they came and they said they want 16 million, and uh, I didn't have that kind of money, so I offer 15 million. And uh, one of the players that I got back from loan there, I think it's this guy right there, Marcos Landera, a center back of 27, uh, 63 overall that I probably never used. So I put him up there with 15 million, see if they accept it. And there we go. Good news. They've accepted the offer. And um, he wants 60,000. 
and uh, I don't know why I went down here because at, at one point I only had 58,000 budget but then because obviously I sold now Marcos Landeira uh, I had more so I can offer him the 60,000 four years and uh, if we do get him he's 21 he has absolutely fantastic potential in this game he can go up to like 85 86 and uh, a very very good left winger that can also play in the camp position which is good uh, in case De Las Cuevas is injured or tired not De Las Cuevas sorry what am I saying Nacho Casas and there we go contract offer accepted which meant that we get probably our biggest signing along with Lukaku uh, and Casemiro so I just I just got totally distracted because uh, helicopters drove outside our uh, house, so uh, sorry, I lost my track of thought, but basically, so that was Muniain, and you can see how he fits into the squad there, so happy that we got him, but a very big signing there, and um, obviously, we have to free up some space on the bench, we put in some of our um, new kind of uh, players, in, and there you can see where Muniain fits in, we get an offer for Las Cuevas, and I say, yeah, take him for 2 million, because he's very unhappy, and he's not being played enough. And now we have a, a friendly match against Wigan, which we win easily 3-1 with Lukaku scoring twice. So that was easy. I don't really care about the friendly matches. And uh, we also sold De Las Cuevas for uh, 2 million and we got 1.7 million, which is good because he's, uh, while he was decent, you know, we don't really need him. So uh, I, was, uh, I wasn't too sad to see him gone. Now another friendly against Juventus away. We lose 2-0, uh, you know, which is fair enough. Um, Juventus are a fabulous team and especially away. I wasn't really expecting a win. And our final a uh, sim game is against uh, Parma there uh, you know I'm still there you can see uh, my lineup is so so strong Butlin, Laura, Luis Eduardo, Zuma, Kinea, Kesimiro, Malangu, Nahar, Nacho, Casas, Munian, and Lukaku and we win this game 1-0 uh, Mandi getting injured though and uh, I think we're gonna see here right now for how long that's for um, that is for five weeks so that's a bit of a disappointment thankfully he's not a starter uh, anyway, we get some offers for Oscar Trejo, who is also very unhappy. And, um, you know, I was kind of wondering, should I let him go? Because he's 75 rated. He's surprisingly good, but somehow he just, I just don't like the way he plays and he just doesn't fit my play style. But uh, I decided to counter offer here for uh, 3.5 million, maybe a little bit cheeky. Um, but maybe not because, you know, he can still be quite a valuable player to bring on in some games considering he's... Uh, you know, he has a very good rating, so maybe I should use him more. I'm not too, too sure about that, but um, let's jump into our first game of the season here. Um, so as you can see, I had the transfer action pretty much cleared out. I did some research, and I put the players in my short list that I wanted, and I got it over with. That's the way I like to do it on career mode. So I hope you guys also like that, that there wasn't too much drama. I got my shit over with, and we are ready to go for the new season with Muniain there and... Uh, uh, you know, bringing in four free agents to increase the squad depth. We're ready to go here with Muniain playing in the number 31 shirt uh, on the left wing for Sporting Ijon in the first uh, game of the season as Real Betis at our home stadium there. Looking very sexy in the, the sunny weather. And we are off with Luis Eduardo on the ball in the 32nd minute. And what does he do? Remember, he's a center back. And boom, what a finish from a center back. Luis Eduardo showing what's up. And um, a nice little celebration there. And uh, getting us the first goal of the season uh, from our center back, which is uh, quite, quite surprising, but a really good goal as he does kind of a dummy. Cuts back inside and a fabulous right-footed finish. Not the type you'd expect to see from a center back, but hey, what you gonna do? And um, went to the second half here. And Real Betis are piling on the pressure. I... You know that, and and uh, they score, and that's not my fault because I headed out, and uh, uh, you know I might be the game's fault, but I don't think it's my fault. All I can do is press X and hope that it goes out of play, and uh, uh, it didn't. It fell to him, and he scored, and there I get a chance. I I was so sure I was going to score with Lukaku there to get us the two-one win, but I didn't. I remember that now they bring on De Las Cuevas. We just sold him, so he gets the game straight away, and uh, we're piling on the pressure here with the corners. Um, Muni, I, I thought he was better at shooting um, than he was because uh, I remember him being have a quite a good shot in United. Um, I mean, in my United career mode, so that's odd. But but what can you do? Maybe it's the update. And here, Casemiro gets a shot, and in the 88th minute, Lukaku inches wide, and uh, it's even offside. So so we're coming very close, but it doesn't look like we're gonna score, and we don't, which is disappointing. Um, but you know, a one-one tie, uh, first game of the season. And, uh, you know, we were the better team there with Zuma and Kanea both having very, very good games.
But guys, that's the first episode of season three. Um, I took about a week off from YouTube, uh, which I've done quite often now. But now I'm almost done with my schoolwork. Summer is coming. I'm excited. I'm going to be providing you guys with more FIFA content. I have a really cool Ultimate Team video coming up as well this week. So be sure to stay tuned for that. It's going to be awesome. And uh, so, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. If you have a like, uh, help so, so much. Also, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for Ultimate Team and Career Mode. And I hope you all have a very nice day. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.